what people don't understand, she came out of a cult that indoctrinated her, brainwashed her. So now she's afraid of being deceived again. Mm. She now has trust issues. It's like a bad marriage. So now she's very afraid. She doesn't want to be deceived. She thinks her whole life has been a lie. Well, uh, so right. like she's just wanting to know how to recover from that. Basically, your healing is going to come from being in the presence of Christ. And that comes through a lot of intense prayer. But it's not just rope prayer. It's prayer where you're opening up your heart and speaking to him. Here, Psalm 116 was an example. Mm hmm. He goes, I love the Lord because he always inclines his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him. So you have to speak to God because he's real. He's not just make believe and he's not distant. Speak to him. Open up to him. Tell him that <clears throat> what you're going through. Enter his presence and get to know him intimately, personally, mm -hmm. through prayer, through also worship. Worship means meaning singing his praises. Because if you go to James 5, 13, if you're joyful, let him sing to the Lord. Singing his praises and then meditating on the Bible without the filters anymore. But do mm. not interpret the Bible. What I mean is you read the Bible devotionally, but you don't read it to interpret it for others because you're still young and you're coming out of this brainwashing cult. You just want to read the Bible devotionally. Because Jesus says, when you read the Bible, God is speaking to you. So he asks the Holy Spirit, right. say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Just meditate and focus and let the word then heal you emotionally, psychologically, physically, and spiritually. Because the Bible says, God's word cleanses you. Go to Psalm 119, verse 9. I'm going to show you where it says, the word of God is used by God to cleanse you. Not just physically, I mean. Meaning, to, it can he be used to heal your physical ailments? It's meant to cleanse and purify your mind and your emotions. So in Psalm 119, verse 9, how do you keep pure? How do you become clean? Yeah. How can a young man cl cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to your word. And the Y is capitalized, so it's God. You see? Yeah. By taking heed, you'll be cleansed. Hear his word. Meditate on his word. Let it penetrate. You become second nature. Now, John 15, verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. See. How did he cleanse them? With the word. All right. Now, Ephesians 5, 25 to 29. Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Amen. That he might, that he might sanctify and cleanse with the washing of the water by the word. Did you hear that, wife? That's for you and your husband. The Lord cleanses his church by the word, the word you meditate on. You visualize it in your mind. Not just read it. Meditate on it. Play it on your mind. Play out the scenes. Like Put yourself in the scene like, wow. Let it just penetrate your soul and cleanse and purify you. Because what you were exposed to isn't the Bible. The literature of the Joe's Witnesses, where you would read a chapter, what does the Bible really teach, and answer questions, but never just straight up read the Bible devotionally, you and God. Right? So this is what you need to do. And then go to the first Psalm, Psalm 1. So in Psalm 1, watch what it says. We're going to read the entire Psalm. Just read it slowly. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now, let me explain what it means. Ungodly, those who could care less about God, who make mockery of the faith, who think that people who follow God are stupid and who just want to live life and revel yep. in sin and party lifestyle. But yep. also the ungodly are those who are false teachers who deceive you. <clears throat> Keep going. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Did you catch it? Yep. Meditates. Meditates. Meditates doesn't mean doing what Hindus do. Oh, no, no. Meditates means you study the word, reflect on the word, think about the word, and play it out in your mind. Mm. Now finish it. So his delight is in the law of the Lord, the Torah of the Lord, and meditates on it. Keep going. He shall be like a tree planted in the rivers of water that brings forth mm. its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chafe which the wind dr drives away. 
Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Exactly. They'll be thrown out. They'll yes. be cut off and they'll be destroyed. For the Lord knows the ways of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. See, so you're the blessed individual if you meditate, reflect, play out, visualize God's word. Because we're creature repetition. The more yes. we hear something, see something, do something, comes right, second nature. Right. So if you're not meditating on the word, it won't sink in. It won't be second nature. It won't be. So right. she, that's part of her healing process and cleansing process. Healing process and cleansing process is to be at the feet of the Lord. Well, how do you spend time with Jesus? Because she never spent time with Jesus. She spent time with the society. Right. Crying out to him. Speaking to him. Opening her heart to him, telling him how she's feeling. I'm angry. I'm disappointed. I have trust issues. He knows, but he wants you to express it to him, give it to him, trust him, and then read his word because his word will cleanse you and reassure you and strengthen you. In fact, let me give her another passage to encourage her. Okay. First Peter 5, verses 6 to 7, specifically verse 7, but First Peter 5, near the end, verses 6 to 7. Uh, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Let me see what it means. Before you do it. He's saying, don't think you're self-sufficient. Don't think you're better than you are or stronger than you are. Yes. What the Lord wants you is to be broken before him. Admit your frailty. Admit you don't have strength. Admit that you're damaged. Admit you have trust issues. And when you do that and you humble yourself, now watch verse 7. Read 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. You got it? He yes, cares for you, but he can't work with you if you think you're self-sufficient. Right. But if you acknowledge you're weak, that's what delights his heart, and he'll come running to you to lift you up and carry right. you. So let me give you a few more verses. All right. Isaiah 57, 15. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. You see who he dwells with? He dwells not only in a high place, but the one who is broken and is <clears throat> acknowledging of their brokenness, contrition, that they acknowledge their brokenness and that they are not self-sufficient. I dwell with him, her. Now finish it. Verse 15, finish it. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So who? The ones who are broken, marginalized, the ones who know they're not strong, they have no strength, the ones who have been disappointed and have trust issues. They're the ones that God will run to, to revive them and strengthen them. Amen. That's what he says, right? Amen. I'm going to give you two more. Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. And save such as have a contrite spirit. So who is he near? Near those who have a broken heart. Not those who think they're self-sufficient and can do it. Yeah. And if you're contritious and you realize, I'm broken, I'm weak, I can't do this, Lord. He will run to you and flood you in his love and choice and peace. So you see it, right? Yeah. This is why the Lord then gives this promise. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. I watch Jesus' invitation to all of us, especially your wife who needs it because she has trust issues. Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am now, gentle. Imagery, before you finish it, imagery, yoke is what you put on a beast of burden, right? Like if you put, yep. you yoke an, a beast to then plow the field, right? But mm -hmm. usually oxen would have, you'd have two oxen yoked together. You put a yoke on two oxen so they can work together, right? Right. So Jesus' imagery is saying, here, come under my yoke. You and I will come under the same yoke. My yoke, come under my yoke, meaning he's there with you, carrying the yoke with you. Now, the imagery is beautiful because if you have two oxen, under the same yoke. Let's say one oxen is weaker than the other. That means the other one is going to have to now <clears throat> compensate for the one that's weaker, right? Right. So what Jesus is saying is, don't be afraid. Come under my yoke because at the end of the day, 
I will give you the strength to carry it, but you got to be yoked with me. Right. So come under my yoke. Follow me. Come under my yoke. Put my yoke on you. You won't be the only one carrying it. I will be carrying it with you. And when you're weak, my strength will be enough to then compensate and enable you to endure to the end because I'll never let you go. So that's the imagery. Now, what is his yoke? Obeying his commandments. Now, reread that again with that light, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, the yoke is learning from him. Be my disciples. Learn. So I said, meditate on his word, right? Yep. Learn from me. Listen to me. But you can't learn and listen if you're not meditating on the Bible. Follow me and I will never burden you and harm you because I'm humble and gentle with you. My desire is never to hurt you and harm you. So that's what you need to do. So I hope that answers the question, brother.